Hello students, I warmly welcome all of you for my online O-level ICT classes. So I'm Mrs. Akila Farwin. I'm really glad to uh, connect with you today and you are actually watching the first class of uh, the online classes conducted especially for the O-level 2023 ICT students. So in this first class, I am going to start with the first chapter of your whole O-level ICT syllabus, which is going to be unit one in your grade 10 book, that is information and communication technology. Let us begin. So in this chapter, first of all, we have to understand what is meant by data, and then what is meant by information. So basically we have to understand the difference between data and information. Basically data are numbers, words, images and symbols which do not bear a meaning, okay? In other words, when numbers, words, images or symbols, when they are standing alone, you know, just numbers which don't bear a meaning is called data. So simply some meaningless raw facts which can be available in the form of numbers, words, images or symbols is known as data. Now, when this data gets processed, it becomes meaningful information which can be used to make decisions. Okay, so any numbers, words, images and symbols which do not bear a meaning when standing alone are called data. This data can be processed to obtain meaningful information which can then be used to make decisions. Let us see some examples. If you have something like this, okay, we have Ravi 78, 90, 79, 67 and so on. Then we have Rizwan, some numbers. Then we have Krishan, some numbers. Now, this is just data. We just have some names, some numbers, and this is meaningless because we can't understand anything from this, isn't it? We just have some words. We can identify it as names, of course, but we don't know what these numbers are. But we can represent this in a table. We can actually tabulate these numbers and represent it in a table. And if we want, we can even do some calculations on this so that it becomes more meaningful. As you can see here, a teacher would arrange the student's name and if these are their marks, she might arrange the marks like this, calculate the total, average, and rank, which will help the teacher to make a decision. So before this, we just had some names and some numbers, that's it. But now we can identify this as these numbers are actually the marks for different subjects. From these, we can calculate the total average. And when we do this process, that is when we do this calculation to identify the total and average, we can make decisions as who is first in the class or who has got the highest total, who has got the second highest or who has got the lowest total. So many decisions can be made after processing this data. So this is an example for data. When data gets processed, it becomes meaningful information which can be used to make decisions. Let us see another example. Look at these images. What are these? Just some human figures, isn't it? We can say this is a boy and maybe this is a, another man, this is a girl, this is a woman, okay? So these are some human figures, which is meaningless, just some human figures. We can't get any information from this, right? But after arranging these figures in a particular fashion, 
we can say, wow, this is a family. So you have a mother, you have a father. Um, so they have one son and one daughter. So this is process data. Earlier, we just had the images like this. But when we arrange these images together, that shows a more meaningful image, which is information. Let us see another example. Um, look at this. If you have some symbols like this, these, these are some arithmetic operators. You have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and equal sign. So these symbols alone, it doesn't make any sense, right? These symbols alone, it doesn't give any meaning, any value for it. But when you use these symbols together with numbers like this, it becomes more meaningful. So two plus five equals to seven, which is true. Two times eight is 16. So from this, like when we use the symbols together with numbers, we are able to make a decision as whether this equation is correct or incorrect. Let us see another very simple example. What if you just have a number as 100? This is meaningless. We just know it's a number, that's all. But beyond that, we don't know what this number represents. But if I add a word next to that, if I say 100 miles, ah, oh, there you know that this is a distance. OK? Then the last example I'm going to show you is this one. Again, a sequence of numbers. You have 8, 8, 1, 1, 1, 0. This is meaningless. You just have a sequence of numbers. But if you add slashes in between, then a person who is reading this will be able to understand this as a date. It's 1988, 11. 10. Okay, so this is uh, an information. Earlier, it was just a sequence of numbers, but now with the slashes, it actually represents uh, information. In other words, I can say it actually adds meaning for, the, for those numbers. So that is how data differs from information. Data, when it's processed, it becomes information, right? Let me repeat it. Data, when it is processed, it becomes information. So for example, data could be some raw facts like this. As you can see, I just have a set of numbers and um, uh, some words which actually represents the weekdays. Um, so if you process this data, when we say process, it could be anything like arranging the data in a particular fashion, uh, sorting the data, or, you know, um, like combining the data with some other words, or maybe uh, performing some mathematical operation. So any type of process, when you do on data, that data becomes more meaningful information. Now, for this set of data, I have added a title called temperature, and I have combined the words with the numbers, and I have added some uh, units here, okay, Celsius. Um, so this makes us understand that these are not just numbers. It actually represents the temperature of each day. So this is more meaningful information, right? Now, submitting data, submitting data for processing is called input. And the result we get after the processing is called output. So we send data as input, it gets processed, and we'll be producing the output, which is information. We can call the collection of these three components as a system, okay? So the purpose of a system is to receive data, process it, and provide the results when required. 
and the best example for a system is computer. Computer is a system which takes data as input, processes it, and provides uh, information. So system works in these three steps. It takes data as input, processes it, and provides the output. That is, it will be giving out the required information as and when required. We, we, may, we are actually using many systems in our day-to-day -day activities, okay? That every day uh, we use, we actually deal with many different types of systems. Let us uh, see some examples. The first one, ATM machine, right? We all have used this at least once. So what happens here? When the bank ATM card is inserted to the ATM machine, the data is processed and the information regarding that data, for example, like the account holder's name, account number, balance, those information will be um, displayed or given as an output by the ATM machine. Another example would be fingerprint reader, which is used to record uh, attendance at organizations, like to uh, record the employee's attendance. So here, uh, when an employee places his uh, finger on the scanner, he's actually sending the data, okay? Then the fingerprint, fingerprint is the data which is being um, inputted. So this data will be processed by the system. And uh, according to that, uh, the system will show the time of arrival or the time of departure, or maybe the employee's name, whatever the um, uh, output, which is meaningful. Another example would be uh, scanning a QR code. So nowadays in products and even in places, you see QR code. So when you see a QR code, you know that using your smartphone, you can scan that QR code, which will navigate you for a particular web page. Okay. So when you scan the QR code, basically you are sending data into the uh, smartphone. The smartphone will process it and it will connect to the appropriate website, which is also a part of that process. And finally, it will show the website, which is the output. So again, it goes as input, process, output. And what about a business organization? In businesses, they use a lot of data. Every day, new data is generated, which will be entered into the system. So the system will process and produce information which are used uh, to make decisions, okay? So remember, a system will always take data as input, will process it and produce information as the output. So this information is meaningful, which can be used to make decisions. Now, we understood that we can get information by processing data and that information can be used to make decisions. However, not all information is suitable for making decisions. Information obtained should be of good quality. Only good quality information can help you to make proper decisions. So there are many characteristics that determine the quality of information. We are going to see five main characteristics here. Number one is relevancy. The information provided or produced should be relevant for the individual who is going to read it. For example, the information which is more valuable for us uh, living like for the people who living in Sri Lanka is uh, what's happening in Sri Lanka. I mean, like the Sri Lankan news is more relevant for us. Therefore, it's more valuable. That is more quality information for us. Okay. Then completeness. 
like if you take information from only a small um, you know if you take information by processing only a small amount of data it might not be sufficient or it might produce incomplete information which could lead uh, in wrong conclusions okay so information should be complete in order to obtain complete information if you have 100 uh, we'll say 100 sets of data then you have to take all 100 sets of data process it then you will uh, end up having a complete piece of information which will be a complete information which can be considered as quality information then the third characteristic is accuracy. For example, um, we'll say if a doctor gets inaccurate information about a patient's health, maybe in a medical report, uh, it might lead the doctor to make a wrong decision on the medication that needs to be pres prescribed to the, to the patient, isn't it? Because when it comes to such scenarios like in medicine, science, engineering and all, you really need accurate information. Always the information should be accurate as much as possible because accurate information is what is considered to be quality information and that can lead to make more accurate and correct decisions. Then the fourth characteristic is timeliness. The information must always be updated and available according to the current time. Okay, now for example, um, like uh, we can think of the number of COVID cases or maybe the number of uh, the amount, uh, the dollar exchange rate, you know, the currency exchange rate. So this type of information uh, will be expected to be up, up to date according to the current point of time. And think of uh, weather information. This information will be useful only if it is up to date, isn't it? So timeliness determines the quality of information. Good quality information should be updated it should be up to date. It should be available according to the current time. And also cost effectiveness. Now, if an organization has to spend a lot of money to produce information, uh, it is actually will be increasing the cost of the organization, which will decrease their profit. Okay, so not only in a business organization, even in your personal life, if you have to uh, spend a lot to get some information, that is not uh, considered to be a good thing because I mean, we should not be having to pay so much money to get uh, good quality information. We need information to run our life. So therefore, uh, information should not, um, you know, uh, be very expensive to obtain. Right. So these are uh, five basic characteristics that determine the quality of information. Actually, there are more than this. There are many more characteristics that determine the quality of information. But these five are the basic five characteristics which determine the quality of information. Right. So we learned that uh, we can get information by processing data. And this information will be uh, used to make decisions and arrive at conclusions, right? This information will also be exchanged among different people and different systems, which is known as communication or sharing, okay? So today, technology is used in various ways to convert this data into information and share that information, which is called information and communication technology. So when we talk about ICT, it involves information, then communication, that is sharing the information, 
as and also using the technology to produce that information and communicate it okay so all three things are involved right so using technology to convert data into information and share that information is known as information and communication technology right today you could hardly come across any person or place that does not use ICT in day to day activities isn't it nowadays ICT is used by government ICT is used in education uh, agriculture ICT is used in the health sector ICT is used in the management of farm house ICT is used in the fishing industry manufacturing industry ICT is used in business ICT is used in transport and ICT is used for entertainment purposes as well now let's look at each of these in a little more detail e government this refers to the government providing its services using ICT a government can use ICT to provide services for different groups of people. For example, the government can use ICT to provide its citizens with online access to information and services, which is termed as government to citizen, in short, G to C. For example, the Sri Lankan uh, Government Information Center uses web technology to provide information services through the website www.gic.gov.lk. So here you can see a screenshot of that web page. A government can also use ICT to share uh, systems between government agencies, departments or organizations, which is termed as government to government, in short, G to G. An example of a successful G to G project is the Northeast Gang Information System. This system is used by states in the Northeast to share information about street gangs, including gang-related activities and gang intelligence. The, this system connects all the state police departments of the participating states and the police departments transmit the collected information to their state's other law enforcement and public service agencies through this system. Then government can also use ICT to provide information and services to businesses in the country which is termed as government to business, in short, B2B. The Sri Lankan Inland Revenue Department website is a very good example for this. Another aspect of e-government is government to employees, abbreviated G2E, which is the online information services provided by a government to its employees. For example, the UK government provides information to its employees on how to calculate their wages through their website. There are many ways the computer and the internet are used for education nowadays. In the classroom, Computers and the internet are used to show presentations and videos to students, which means that ICT serves as a teaching aid for the teachers. In many countries, it has become a common practice to use a learning management system, in short, known as LMS, to manage school systems or higher education systems. And with the development of ICT, Today, a person from any country can connect with a university or any other institution of his or her choice and pursue higher education at a considerably lower cost. ICT has created a new revolution in the field of 
agriculture as well. A range of automatic machines are available today, such as meteorological devices, automated insect control devices, field condition measuring devices, automatic uh, weed removers, seed planting robots, and crop harvesting robots to ease the work of the farmer who worked hard in the field. These machines not only reduce the work of a farmer, but also enables him to produce high quality yields. Many of the difficult processes in the medical field have become efficient with the use of modern equipment such as CAT machines, MRI machines, ECG machines, cardiac screening machines, EEG machines, blood sugar testing machines, and uh, blood pressure measuring machines. ICT has also enabled telemedicine such as emergency telemedicine, home health medicine, medicine uh, telemedicine consultation, remote surgery, and even medical teletraining. A range of automatic machines is available today to ease the management of farmhouses. Cows are being fitted with smart collars that monitor if they are sick or if they are moving around more, which is a sign of fertility. Technological devices are used to analyze cow breath. Thermal imaging cameras are used to identify uh, inflamed others to provide earlier treatment to prevent bacterial infection. 3D cameras are used to measure the weight and muscle mass of cattle, uh, so they are sold at the beefiest. A system of three cameras developed by researchers in Belgium tracks the movements of thousands of chickens to analyze their behavior and spot over 90% of possible problems. The consumption of farmed fish has now surpassed the consumption of beef. Researchers are working to increase the type of fish that are raised. Artificial ecosystems are used to mimic ocean conditions so that saltwater fish farms can be built inland. This would allow millions of uh, landlocked people to be able to enjoy fresh fish. The most exciting thing about using, using ICT in fish farms is that it helps to create a closed system. So it doesn't uh, produce any waste, you know. Sensors are placed in different parts of the sea, which convey information on fish concentration in the sea to the computers in fishing trawlers via the internet. Likewise, ICT is used to develop the fishing industry massively. ICT is used in manufacturing high quality products and reducing the cost of production by minimizing the use of human labor in many industries and businesses. Since high quality products are manufactured at low cost, people can buy good quality products at a relatively low price. The advantage of uh, information and communication technology are numerous and revolutionary in nature, especially when it comes to business. Now, efficient communication is key to the success of a company, and ICT helps to streamline communication. For example, uh, video conferencing and online meeting platforms such as uh, Google Meet, Zoom, and Microsoft Teams offer the services for businesses to work remotely in real time, greatly reducing the cost. While uh, it may initially appear expensive to implement ICT, in the long run, it will become significantly cost-effective 
by streamlining an organization's managerial and operational processes. Basically, implementing ICD in businesses allows them to achieve more with less without compromising value or quality. ICT can help an organization to enhance its, co its competitive edge in the marketplace by encouraging knowledge transfer and strategic thinking. For instance, by leveraging a subscription databases and social networks, companies uh, are enabled to organize, interpret, and transmit data like never before. This has provided enterprises with unmatched access to consumers and customers, assisting companies to deliver better and innovative products. Today, many systems such as CCTV, traffic light control systems, and parking identification placards are used to enhance uh, road traffic by minimizing traffic jams. Various devices and equipment have been invented to provide some peace of mind to human beings who are spending a busy life today. These devices enable us to listen to music, watch missed TV programs, exchange information between friends and relatives, play games during free time, read ebooks on the internet, and much more. By helping us to perform our day-to-day -day activities with ease, ICT has become a close companion to us. However, if we use this companion in an inappropriate manner, it may bring forth undesirable effects. For example, internet addiction can lead to anger, depression, and social withdrawal. Prolonged internet use can damage uh, children's cognitive development and it can have negative effects on their memory skills, attention span, analytical thinking, language acquisition, and reading. Information overload is another negative impact of ICT. Too much information may make it difficult to properly understand an issue or make effective decisions. Extensive internet use is correlated with loneliness and social isolation, including a significant number of victims of cyberbullying, cyberstalking, and online predation. Internet use can even damage the intimate relationship and lead to poor communication, disrespect, and lack of trust. There is an opinion that ICT has negative impacts on human society due to the issues we just discussed. But we have to understand that the systems made by ICT make most of man's routine work effortless. Therefore, it is our responsibility to use ICT in a responsible manner. Well, so that concludes an introduction to ICT, which I wanted to cover in today's lesson. Well, students, when it comes to ICT, there are a lot of acronyms that you have to be familiar with. So here is the list of acronyms uh, we discussed in today's lesson. So ICT stands for Information and Communication Technology. Then ATM stands for Automatic Teller Machine. Then we have ICTA, which is the short for Information Communication Technology Agency. Then we have something called WBT, which is the short for Web-Based Training. LMS stands for Learning Management System. 3D is the short for three-dimensional. CHAT is a machine used in medicine, which is the short for computerized axial tomography. MRI is again a machine, which is a, a short for magnetic resonance imaging. 
ECG is a machine which is uh, the short for electrocardiogram. EEG stands for electroencephalography. ETU is the short for emergency treatment unit. RFID is radio frequency identification device, which is used in farmhouse. CCTV is the short for closed circuit TV, which is mainly used uh, in controlling traffic. Well, so that's all I wanted to uh, cover in this lesson. So I have covered the first chapter, uh, information and communication technology. So I would like to give you a reading homework. In your grade 10 book, please read from page number one to 26, which has all the in detail notes of the concepts I explained in this lesson. And I would also like to give you a suggestion. So when we say page one to 26, there are 26 pages, which will be boring for you to re read at a stretch. So what you can do is you can read five pages per day for the next five days. So you will be very much familiar with the concept or with the topics uh, covered under information and communication technology in your unit one of the O-level ICD syllabus. So with that, I'm going to end this lesson. I will connect with you again soon to discuss all the past paper questions related to this first unit of your syllabus. Thank you for joining with me today. Stay blessed.